What's going on? This is Rick. Good morning to everybody out there. Take this opportunity to say that and uh, say have a good day out there. I want to do this little video, though, to get a little bit more introduction about where I came from, how uh, my career with that ended, and why the decisions that I made to uh, be where I'm at right now. So I want to take that opportunity to share that with everybody out there. So let me just start out with how, how I became and, and, and how my uh, my growth with the uh, that organization came about and my walk away from it. So basically, you know, born and raised, like I said, from Dakota, um, street soldier started out very small. You know, we got three generations in Dakota. We got LDG, we got VGD, and we got Whipple Rotors. So you start as a youngster as the LDG, Little Dakota Gangster, and then you go to VGD, Valle Grande Dakota, to Whipple Rotors. So people in the, in the East Bay know what I'm talking about. So basically with that being said, Started out as an LDG, went to Bernard White Little Middle School, went from there to uh, James Logan High School, got kicked out of Logan for fighting with syndicates. Yes, Jeremy Contreras, for those that don't know, also known as Squeeze. A um, lot of fights with the syndicate, a lot of fights in between the Northerns there. So, you know, always beefing with like Newark, Fremont, um, pretty much the whole East Bay, you know what I'm saying, was going against each other, Northern against Northerns. So got kicked out of El, uh, to, got kicked out of El Rancho. And from El Rancho, I mean, from Logan, excuse me, from Logan High School, and then went to El Rancho uh, Continuation. Um, from that, my career started taking off. I started putting in more work with the Northern Organization and going into the jails, getting, like, little key positions from some of the older uh, Carnas there. So with that being said, after, you know, getting those little key positions and handling mine, according to, like, how I was supposed to handle that guideline, I was introduced to be a... Uh, so the marriage chronicle for the East Bay Regiment. So basically, I, I, I filled out my application and was accepted as the B status and was uh, trying to grow into my career as a carnal, you know what I'm saying, C status. So with that, I got out of jail uh, was and was told that I had a position uh, as, a, uh, as a, a person, as a runner, basically, and I was going to be dropping off to the people that, was, that I was told to drop off to. Um, and then that, and that organization, we had, let's see, we had uh, Gonzo, we had JJ. We all know about JJ and, and Monster and the whole East Bay thing. We know about uh, Gonzo, you know, him going out bad for his money. Um, and we had Weddo. Weddo was from uh, Pelican Bay. He was part of all that. And he got out. And then there was a few others, you know what I'm saying? Not to mention, but like Bass Tone and all them. So basically, I get, I get out of jail and I was told to contact, uh, I was told to contact JJ and he would have a vehicle for me prepared. You know, with the, the the dashboard, with the code and all that other, you know what I'm saying? And I would be hooking up with the school teacher that was also one of the runners, and her name was Deanna. So me and Deanna would just go around all, all over the Bay Area just dropping off our drugs and, 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 and marking the books so we can make sure we're good. So basically after we, we drop off our stuff and we mark our books, we're supposed to go back and report to the homeboy Weddo. Weddo had a lot of respect. He had a lot of time in the organization. So his word was pretty solid to, to, to the people that we were contacting and who we were dealing with. So as time goes on, we know we did this and we did this for a while. And uh, basically, I come to find out that the car that we're in was involved in one of the raids at one of our spots and that they had got it out of impound and they didn't change up nothing on the car. So, you know, I was a little upset about that. So I made a complaint. So by making that complaint and challenging the older homeboys and, the, and, and, and their, their tactics, basically put me on the on the on the limelight so they're like okay who is this who is this dude he just signed his marriage he just got a free he ain't got no time with us we got to you know we got to see who this dude is so basically they're just hating that's another word to say it and uh so after that you know i made my complaint with that and uh so i wasn't really feeling that so i told diana i was like look we're gonna go get our own car we're gonna just start running it you know we were making money started doing the books, started like making sure everything's up to par because at that time, you know, you're brainwashing and you, and you think you got to be up to par and, you, and if you make a mistake, you know, you get that DP and all, and all that other stuff, you know, comes with that. So we come to come to find out the homeboy Weddo has a, a drug problem. He's, he's doing the, he's doing the drugs. He's doing Coke. He's spending his money on the, on the females. He's trying to high side, you know what I mean? And he's thinking that he's like head, head on to the whole East Bay. Basically, he ain't, he's a one-man team. It really, that's a, you know, that's the mentality this individual has. So, basically, we had to report to him like who we dropped to, our books, uh, you know, this like everything that our 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 part as me and me, Deanna and and what we were filling in was to report to Weddo. So, 
one day I, I take some money. I'm gathering up money from the homies, and I gather up about a thousand dollars from some of the homies in the Ramos. You know what I'm saying? The Ramos homies, trust me, I'm the big bro. You know what I'm saying? So they they're gonna give me their money, no problem. They you know they think that it's all up to par because that's how I do business. So I take the money from them. I tell them, look, give me an hour. I'm gonna drop this money off. We're making our drops. We got you when we come back. So I take the money and I go and, and I, I turn everything into Weddo. Weddo takes off and he calls me. I'm calling him. We're missing each other's calls. So like two hours going and I'm like, man, where are we going to go pick up? What's going on? So Weddo like ends up getting at us and he says, listen, you guys owe this much money and we're taking that money to pay that back because you guys are not fulfilling your part on your books. We owe 300. He's claiming we owe 2,700. So I tell him, look, I only owe 300. Obviously, there's something wrong here. Like, like there's a mix up on, on the books. So, what's how are we going to go about doing this? Because I got other homies' money that, you know, we got to take care of our business. So, he tells me, no, that money's going in to pay for what you owe, right? Your books has got to be straight. You figure it out. So, after he said that, I'm like, okay, this motherfucker just basically put me and, and, and the homegirl in a position. And just because he got all more status than me, because he's been known a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? That they're going to take this motherfucker's word over mine. So basically from there, I made that decision to go headhunt for this guy. So, well, you know, that whole day, me, the Ramos homies, strapped up, riding in the Mustang, kicking in doors, looking for this dude. So when that word gets out that doors are being kicked and that we're, we're out to bust on, on Weddle, they, they give a call. Like Gonzo Hiss goes up and says, hey, what's going on? So I tell Gonzo, I say, look, man, nobody owes no money. This is what's happened. So Gonzo says, well, look, we're gonna put every, we're gonna put everything on freeze, and and we're gonna investigate this. Tell the little homies to relax. We'll take care of them if that's the case. So I said, freeze. So what's what freeze me? You know, I'm out here trying to get my money. What's happening? He says, well, I can't do nothing more until we get to the bottom of this. So I say, okay. I say, so you're gonna put me on freeze for something that I ain't even doing, right? So you can stop my cash flow. But after that. He states that, so I got family in San Jose. I got family in Salinas. They all regiment, so I'm not even tripping. I'm going to go and handle my work. So I go out there, and I, I, I cop some work from them, what happens to be better than all the East Bay's work. So I go back out to the East Bay, and I'm dropping some fire to them, and, and, and people are coming, and I'm taking all of their customers now, so they get word of this. So time goes on, like three months later, they're talking about I'm no good, and I'm going to have to, like, get handled, whatever, you know what I'm saying? They're out to get me. So I ain't even tripping. I'm making my money. I ain't hiding. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to all the spots in the Ramos, the DGF. Yes, I'm messing with Tiger, Monster. Everybody knows me, you know what I'm saying? They know I'm not scantling. So basically, what comes out about is they find out that not only did Weddle do this to us, but he did it to like five other people, right? So after like, you know, like dealing with that, going through that whole mix, like a bunch of drama over that, I'm just trying to make money. So I, I go, I tell Gonzo, I say, look, man, I'm not coming back to, you, to your little organization and, and doing your work, you know what I'm saying, after you guys just put me on freeze and not even took my word as a, as a you know what I'm saying, as, as a man, like you should have because I've never done faulty business. So, you know, they try to brainwash you and talk about what they're going to do and how they're going to clean it up and everything. So I'm already, I'm already working for the family in San Jose. I'm already right there, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to the beans on 10th Street for those in San Jose that know about what the 10th Street smoke, you know, smoke shop upstairs shop, you know what I'm saying? The, that ended up being bad, but that whole that whole part right there in the San Jose Regiment, right? So I don't want to mention names because I have family members that would probably be upset if I mentioned some of the things. So coming out of that, I tell a cousin of mine, I said, look, they want me to come in. They want me to do your work again. He says, nah, man, they, they, they done fucked up. We got you up here. Don't trip. So Gonzo keeps on pushing and pushing on me. JJ, everybody's coming at me. So I'm thinking, like, man, these motherfuckers want to disrespect. I'm going to show them disrespect. So me, knowing who I know and what I could do, I print up some $100 bills, about $7,000, and then I call the homies, and I say, look, send your runner. I got $7,000. Hook up some work. So they send Black Lee from uh, Newark. I don't know if you all know him, Fremont, Newark. Hold on one second, please. So they send him out to me. He meets me at a gas station. I say, what's up, Lee? I hand him the $7,000 in counterfeit money. He hands me the drugs. I, I pull out of the parking lot. I go to a spot right there. I don't know if you guys know Tennyson area, but the hospital right there. And I pull up into the parking lot of the hospital. 
because I don't want to be out on the road fighting this man. And I call him up. I say, hey, look, it, that money you got right there is counterfeit. I'm right here in this parking lot. If you want to handle it, whoever, send them over. I'll wait for 30 minutes. But if you're a man, by what you, and you're going to have to answer for that counterfeit. You need to come and get this fade and get your money back. He Lee doesn't show up over at the hospital parking lot. So I wait there 30 minutes like a man, like I said, I was going to do because I ain't no punk. And uh, he don't show up. And then now all of a sudden I'm getting calls from everybody talking about we're going to get you. We're going to do this and that. So I'm like, man, I'm not hiding. I'm right here. You know what I'm saying? I'm riding in the Bay Area. You know what I'm saying? So I started texting them locations. So that just tells you what kind of individuals that we're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody showing up. Ain't nobody wanting one. So people like, you know, like, you know, they up and down about like what I did on that, that, that call. But that call was just to take a stand saying, look, you want to like treat me like this. I'm going to come back to you, at you like that. So, you know, monster, monster from the DJs, my boy, uh, tiger, you know what I'm saying? Big tiger, little tiger. That's my loved ones. You know what I mean? Lowe's, Pac-Man. I, I can go on and on with some, some people that I used to run with, you know, June from DJ, everybody, uh, from the Ramos all the way to Fremont, to Newark, to I can name names all the way down to San Jose, Salinas, all the way back up to all of the Bay. You know what I'm saying? Ain't hiding from nobody, still riding. Everybody knows where I live. So after about, a, about eight months of this going on, I go to jail. So I ended up in uh, Building 8, Santa Rita. I go in there, Charles Howard from A Street. Everybody's in there, and they were like, man, you already know what time it is, you know what I'm saying, when these doors crack, because it's a lot down to uh, this the max there, the medium max, dressed in yellow. I said, look, I ain't hiding from nobody either, and this is where I'm at, so if I have to take a stand right here, that's what I'm going to do. So come out. I get down with a couple of the you know, they, they They come at me, two of them. I get down. So uh, they tell me, look, we can't put you back in the, in the, in the building there. We're going to put you in the hole. We're going to evaluate all this. And we're going to go from there. So, you know, like my pride, like, you know, feeling like I ain't done nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to stand for my, my pride and sitting in that hole. And, 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 you know, like, I'm not going to drop out, basically. That's what, that's where I was at. You know what I'm saying? In my mind. Because I was so brainwashed from a young age. So it was a real hard decision. So, you know, like getting out and then going through the whole mix again. And then, you know, I started meeting homeboys. So, like, a lot of the homies, like uh, Shadow and, and, and Al, and, and just like so can go on and on, right? Coming from the S&Y side, like uh, J-Cat and everybody else, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Many Me, uh, Black Dre, R.I.P., you know what I'm saying? Uh, just a lot of fools that like, were getting at me, like, man, you, you, it's lovely over here. You need to come over here and check this out. And then I got a brother that I love very dearly. His name is John Creech. I don't know if all you know him, but he's from, he's from Union City also, you know what I'm saying? Fairway Park. And uh, he was telling me, man, you know, who cares about all that? We don't deal with chomos. We don't deal with rats. We over here, we handle our business, and, and we function like this. So they run it down, and, you know, it, it ain't sounding so bad. So I ain't got to debrief. I ain't got to go do none of that, right? But now this, the administration, knowing what position I had and where I was at in the organization, they weren't just going to put me over there. So every time I was going to Santa Rita, I was having a problem being classified into the, the PC module, basically. And then uh, one day, uh, one of the gang experts, whoever that may be, I, I don't remember the name, but came and told me, like, look, we're just going to put you over there. We're going to try you out. If you mess it up, then that's, that's your chance to be, you know what I'm saying, into that module. So they shoot me over there, right? I go into a cell, and right away, I felt, I felt comfortable because that individual handed me his paperwork. Because even on this side, man, we check the paperwork, you know what I'm saying? So individual hands me his paperwork. You know, I go through his thing. I see his record. I'm like, okay, this, this is cool. Thank you for handing that to me because I ain't going to put my pictures up or nothing until I'm comfortable until I know that. You know what I'm saying? And if I don't know that, then you're leaving the room, basically. So individual was cool about it. And then as, you know, time goes on over there, you know, I, I started going to the jail a lot, going to jail a lot. And then I hit prison, right? I hit Avenal prison, uh, uh, four yard. And over there with a lot of my boys, you know what I'm saying? I could name a lot of names there. Uh, Angel, all damn cowboy, everybody from the, you know, from Ryder, Ryder movement. So, you know, as I was checking that out, you know what I'm saying? Well, Snoop's whole get down and everything. And then like, uh, as far as Tracy being on DVI, everybody knows DVI is a chaos when you first go there. So, you know, I'm checking it out. I'm like, man, these dudes are solid. You know what I'm saying? This is something cool. I mean, I, I don't feel uncomfortable. I, I feel like I made a right decision. So I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm with the business with that. You know, I, I hear everything and, and, and I switch over to my beliefs. You know what I'm saying? Because my belief is make money, build, and, and be there for each other. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it should be out here. So some people ask, like, 
Okay, let me address this question because it's a very important question. Some people are addressed like, like why why drop out and drop into another game, right? Well, first of all, we ain't no game. You know what I'm saying? Nothing to do with game. We don't like busting politics. We don't like no politics. We're against that. You know what I'm saying? So as far as calling us a game, it's stupid, right? So basically, we businessmen trying to make our money, trying to build each other up and what we could do for each other, right? Because we all from the same type. You know what I'm saying? We all come from some neighborhood. We all been through some bullshit. And so when you ask that question, it's kind of like disrespectful to us because we against politics. You feel me? But still, we got morals, though. We ain't going to go. We ain't going to program with chomos. We ain't going to program with snitches. We're going to do our thing. You know what I'm saying? We still, man, we're going to get down. And, and if you got a problem, I ain't turning down no fades. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of the homies ain't, or a lot of the combats, excuse me, are not going to turn down no fades either. So that's the whole way of thinking, right? I get out on the street now, right? So I'm thinking, okay, now I'm like, these people know where I'm at. I'm, I'm a dropout. You know what I'm saying? I got some people in the neighborhood. Don't get me wrong. Dakota's known to send little soldiers at you. You know what I'm saying? They got crews that go out all the time and try to get certain people, right? I'm a target now, right? So I ain't tripping. I ain't scared. You know what I mean? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to handle business, right? Going through the Bay Area like it's nothing. I'm pulling up at houses that, that are still active. Everything's on fire out there, right? So I, I'm pulling up at houses, Don Caban, Spiders. I'm pulling, I'm pulling into like the OG, like, you know, people that are that with status in the Bay Area. And they all giving me hugs. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for coming by. We love you. We ain't tripping on nothing. That's money. You know what I'm saying? You good in our book. I'm sorry what happened to you. So ain't nothing changed really. You know what I'm saying? So when they say, oh, you PC, you're going to get got. You ain't going to get got, man. Because everybody's just, either they, they all want money and they know if you're a solid individual, that's always going to be with you. So that's my story, man. And I, I, I kind of wanted to share that with you because it's important to know that, like, you know, like people like think that, you know, if you step back, oh, they're going to kill you. You're going to like get beat up or whatever, you, whatever the story you, you know what I'm saying, for each individual, right? Ain't true, man. Like if you stay solid and, and you stay the same from day one, you're going to be treated like this from day one. You know what I'm saying? And the people that are not treating you like that, you already know the shape because really they wasted your time and, and it's really just a, a headache for you, you feel me? So, like, you know, uh, with that being said, man, I think it's really important that you analyze what your beliefs are, man. And, and, and that's the whole point of the story is like, you know, like you get in these positions and then you think one thing, but the outcome of it is totally what you're, you're what, well, like, like what you what you put in your head. You, you'd be actually surprised, you know what I'm saying? So staying solid and, and just believing in your morals, you know what I'm saying, and what you believe in and believing them strongly and you follow that then your growth, you know what I'm saying, as an individual, no matter what you are, is going to skyrocket. And that, and that's my message today to you people. And uh, I just want to introduce myself again and, and, and get that out there, like where, where I came from and what I'm about, and and, and to share that with the public here and, and on this platform. And as far as 100 goes, I want to say, what's up, what's what's up? that's 100 right there. Right. Flacco, excuse me, that's my boy. I call him a different name. We got nicknames for him, you know what I'm saying? I've been reading this, this little public notes that these people have been putting out there. You know what I'm saying? Talking about you know, the, the, the writers are going to get them out, or whatever. Whatever these stupid ass people are talking about. You know what I'm saying? He provides he, he provides a platform for us to come and express and share. It, it don't matter who, don't matter writer, whatever. He's, he's accepting everybody. You know what I'm he, he, he knows me well, man. Like, I look at everybody, I introduce the faces. I ain't going to run around with nobody. I ain't going to kiss nobody's ass, man. He knows me on a one on one basis, man. That's why he's here. So I see comments, you know, that I reached out to him. Now, this is family right here. I don't care. I mean, this is a relationship that I have with him. And As so, an individual. If, I can if, if you're, if you're, if you're trying to engage with and I don't get along, that's between you and me. I'm not going to bring you in shit because that's just how it is, man. I'm not supposed to know somebody next to you. And so I'm basically, like so basically what, I'm, what we're trying to get across here, he's a good dude. He ain't no punk. You know what I'm saying? He's just trying to provide something for everybody to share. And, and, and he's his own man. He's going to make his own decisions. And, and, and. If he wanted to be embraced, he can be embraced. You know what I'm saying? If he comes in, I'm sure that we, you know, it, to any group because he's that type of dude. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's not his get down. So um, we're not going to run that past him, and we're not going to. We don't do that. We don't. We don't go out and look. You know what I'm saying? First of all, and, and for your comments that you're putting out there, man, you got to really check yourself, man, because you're really just wasting our time. You know what I'm saying? Wasting this man's time with that stupid shit. And uh, with that being said. I, I know that this guy right here will do anything for anybody and take a shirt off his back. You know what I'm saying? How anybody that gets out will be there for anybody. He doesn't care if you're active, inactive. He's a strong man. He's a family man. And that's what he's about. You know what I'm saying? 
that's what I'm about. That's what everybody's about. Is family. You know what I'm saying that I mess with. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like, like I said, I'm a compa. You know what I'm saying? And and, and and it's not gang. You know what I'm saying? So you guys like that are putting that shit out there, man. Know what you're talking about before you put it out there because you're sounding stupid. And I just want to put that out there for you. All right. Thank you guys for taking the time to listen to me today. Have a beautiful and blessed day. And, and, and we'll get back at you on another one probably later on tomorrow.